So it seems as though this whole $200 price decrease for the Rift and Touch bundle is really paying off. In my last video where I was discussing the price drop, I asked you guys to let me know if the $200 discount was really the push that you needed to jump into VR with Oculus. And the overwhelming response in the comments section was that it was. So I'm assuming there's going to be a ton of new Oculus Rift owners out there, and I think that is great. Now, as someone who has owned an Oculus Rift for over a year, I bought it right as the CV1 launched, I have learned a lot about using the system, how the hardware works, and I've learned a lot of tips and tricks that I feel would be really useful for newcomers to just get the best experience that they possibly can. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over some tweaks, like things like how to open Steam VR from the Oculus Home menu, as well as some different hardware tricks that I've learned over the past year that I think would be really helpful for any new user. Right off the bat, I want to answer a question that I've received a lot lately, which is, do you recommend getting a third sensor or do you think that I'll survive with just a two sensor setup? To that question, I say a million percent yes. Invest in a third sensor, it's only 60 bucks, and the quality of your experience going from a two sensor setup to a three sensor setup is exponential. One of the worst and most immersion breaking things that can happen to you in VR is for your tracking to go all wonky. You don't wanna see your hands floating away or to not be able to pick something up that's right in front of you because your sensor has run out of room to track. You want the best experience possible and investing that 60 bucks up front is going to guarantee you get that. So that's a hearty recommendation from me. Now that you have those sensors, you need to put them somewhere. And to be honest, those little stands that they all come with really don't cut it. You want your sensors to be in a place where they have optimal coverage of your room or play area, and you want them to be out of the way so that they can't be bumped or, or nudged because each time that happens, you have to completely recalibrate everything. And as someone who has done that literally hundreds upon hundreds of times, maybe not hundreds, but I can say that is something that you want to avoid from the very beginning. That is where these little guys come in. This is a security camera wall mount, which you can get uh, in the link below from Amazon for about nine bucks a piece. I think there might be a combo pack thing, but get enough of these for all of your sensors and they will make your life so much easier. These mounts are great because they allow you to swivel your sensor around to whatever angle or direction that you need to point them in in order to cover your play space. After you remove that little table stand, you can just screw this on to the compatible mount. And, uh, and once you have that, you can just swivel this around on your wall and have it optimally cover your play space. Once your sensors are on the wall, you're gonna wanna make sure that they are really secure. A problem that I've run into in the past is that the weight of the wire will actually pull down on the sensor and that will like ever so slightly change the angle or change the direction of where the sensor is pointing. And once again, you guessed it, I have to run the setup all over. The way that I got around that problem was using a piece of duct tape to tape the sensor's wire to the wall, thus taking the pressure off of the actual sensor itself and uh, preventing it from moving around if the wire slack ever got too tight. This video, I don't really wanna go too in depth about sensor placement and how far or close they should be to each other because it's a pretty involved topic. If you'd like for me to do a dedicated video to that, definitely let me know in the comments below. But for today, just make sure that your sensors are all kind of pointing in the specific direction of where you think you'll be playing and you should be okay. Moving on from sensors, let's talk about another really common problem that Oculus Rift owners will experience. For some reason, Oculus thought it would be a good idea to include a cord that is only about 12 and a half feet long that allows you to connect the Rift to your PC. 12 and a half feet is not a lot to work with. If your desk is tucked away in the corner of your room away from your play space, or if you're just trying to give yourself a little bit more flexibility so you don't accidentally rip your $400 headset, out of your $800 gaming PC, I would highly recommend investing in a couple of cable extenders like these. Personally, I only needed a couple of feet of extra length uh, to be able to use this in my studio, so I kind of hodgepodge together what I already have. Um, these cables obviously aren't even the same length. 
But if you're looking at or looking for a little bit of a more elegant solution to this issue, I highly recommend you check out the video that I've linked here and in the description below by my friend Reality Check VR. He goes into detail about all the differences between some HDMI cables compared to others and gives his opinion on what he thinks and what I think is the best way to go about extending the length of your Oculus Rift headset. I know that 80% of you guys are also thinking, I'm pretty smart, I could figure out HDMI cables, all I have to do is plug some extension cords in, right? Don't do that. You're gonna run into some trouble because as he explains in his video, there are certain lengths of HDMI cables as well as certain types that will produce stuttering if you try to extend with them. So I really recommend you guys go check it out. It's a couple minutes long, but I will link it in the description below and it will save you a lot of headache. Those were the main points that I wanted to kind of explain about setup and hardware and I think if you follow all those tips you should be pretty good to go and you shouldn't have to fiddle around with things when it comes to playing your device. Software however is a completely different beast entirely. They have added a lot of improvements but there are still some things you can do to improve the experience. One of the first things you're going to want to do right out of the gate is to go to your settings by clicking the gear in the top right corner, going to the general tab and enabling third-party support of your Oculus Rift. This will allow applications like Steam VR, uh, the Bedoink porn player, if you're into that, and a host of other applications to hook into your Oculus Rift and give you some cool porn related or not content. Not the most groundbreaking tip in the world, but we will get to those soon, I promise. While you're in that same screen, I would highly recommend also turning off the health and safety warning, which means that every time you turn on your Rift, you won't have to stare at the box that says, I have agreed to the terms and conditions, I won't use this while giving birth, or whatever the hell it says. Turn that off and you won't be bothered by it ever again. Now, on to the good stuff. This next tweak is one of the coolest things that I've come across in my year of owning a Rift, and it really aims to tackle the problem of using the Oculus Rift with other third-party software, specifically Steam VR. Let's say, for example, you're playing a game, like Superhot, through the Oculus Home Store natively. But then your friend comes over, or you want to try something else, and you want to play a game that is activated through your Steam account. Right now, without this tweak, the only way you'd be able to do that is by taking off your headset, walking over to your desktop, and clicking the Steam VR icon. Not a very seamless experience. However, with this tweak, you will be able to launch Steam VR directly from the Oculus home screen. So installing this tweak is pretty straightforward. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is open your Oculus client and search for the game Room 202. This game is relatively small, and basically the idea behind what we're doing is we're kind of creating a wrapper for the Steam client to live in, or, or the script that will activate the Steam client, and it needs to be in an existing game's file. So this one's pretty small, uh, just install that, and while this game is downloading, you're going to want to check the link in this video's description for the download files that you're going to need. It's gonna take you to a Google document, or a Google Drive. Uh, just download this and uh, extract the file, and you will be greeted with all of these uh, beautiful icons right here. Uh, this one is the one that actually does it. These ones are just for show. Uh, it's gonna make everything look pretty nice. And, uh, and then once your uh, download is finished, uh, we can move on. You're going to want to go to your C folder, which is most likely where your Oculus software is hiding. Uh, you're gonna go to C, Program Files, and then find Oculus right here. Once you're there, you double click on Software, and this should be where you are doing most of the next steps. However, since I designated my E drive to be the place that my Oculus games are stored, uh, that is where I will be finishing the rest of this tutorial, uh, but the same things apply. So you double click on Software, and then you're going to find uh, the Room 202 folder. Double click that and double click this. Once you do this, you're just going to click and drag this room202.exe into that folder. Uh, that means that this script will run uh, whenever you click this, uh, whether it be on your desktop or through Oculus Home, and uh, it'll take you right to Steam. But we're not finished yet. Uh, you can go back to that software folder. Then, when you're there, you're gonna want to locate the store assets folder, which you're going to double click on, and then again, you're gonna locate room 202. Fine, there it is. There it is. All right, so this folder is empty. Uh, you're gonna have some game files, but since I've been messing around, it's a little bit different. And basically, all you're gonna do is drag these picture files and copy them into that assets file. 
Then once you exit out of Oculus and start it back up, you should see that all of these changes have been committed and you have a nice little uh, portal icon to open up your Steam VR. If you click that button, then uh, Steam VR would open up and you can do this uh, from the comfort of Oculus Home within your device. It's a really useful tweak and it's something that I use all the time. And lastly, I'll leave you with one more recommendation. Don't ignore games that don't use Oculus Touch. There are so many great experiences that existed or were developed with the gamepad in mind. And if you only look for games that utilize the full capabilities of Oculus Touch, you are going to miss out on some of the best VR experiences that exist today. One of the best examples of this is probably Lucky's Tale. I know it came out for free with the purchase of every Oculus Rift, but that doesn't discount the fact that it is a superb platformer, so good that they're actually even making a sequel to it that doesn't require VR. Another game that's incredible is Kronos. That was one of my favorite VR games of 2016. If you like Dark Souls or you like third person action combat games and exploring different worlds that are also gorgeous, then you don't want to miss that one. So. Just because it doesn't have all these gimmicks with being able to wave swords around doesn't mean it's not a great game. And that about does it. I think if you follow these tips, your Rift experience will be pretty flawless. And from all of us old VR folks to all of you newcomers, welcome. I think you're in for a hell of a ride. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more, be sure to click this button right here, which will subscribe you to my channel to keep up to date with all of the newest VR games, hardware, and other dumb stuff that I produce. If you wanna see a more serious uh, VR game review, then you can click the video on the top. And if you wanna see something a little more fun and a little more wacky, be sure to click the one on the bottom right there. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.